Hey, what's going on everybody? Mike here at AX Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another episode on John's EG Civic Hatchback Street track build. Now the last episode, we went ahead to disassemble the entire car and drop the vehicle off to Bowling Vision to do all the necessary body work before we do a fresh paint job. Now in today's episode, we will completely disassemble this B18C motor. Now before we do that, I'm gonna pass you guys to John. All right, John, so B18C motor, uh, I know it has some issues, but uh, tell us more. All right, so this is a 97 JDM Integra Type R motor. These are, um, this motor is one of the ones that was hand ported by the factory in the first years of the production of the Type R motor. Um, that being said, I think it's just kind of cool. My car being a 92, this being one of the first 1.8 liter VTEC motors that were put out. So for me, it's perfect. I've never owned a Type R motor in a B series on any of my cars. So I'm really excited about having this in my car. Now that also being said, this car, when I got it, I was told that under heavy acceleration up top in VTEC, we have some smoke, which kind of leads me to believe we probably got some ring or cylinder wall issues going on here. And so the goal is to have the pistons replaced and the engine overboard. So to get to that, we gotta break this thing down and send the block and the crank to the machine shop, to our local machine shop that's been building motors, not just Honda motors, V8 motors for as long as, longer than I've been alive. So I went with um, a set of uh, 11 and a half, 11 to six to one, 81 and a half millimeter Weissco pistons. These things are awesome. They come with their own rings. I ran these in my LSV Tech in my DA. Love this piston, always really liked it. It's not necessary for me to bump the compression, but you know, a little extra compression didn't hurt, wouldn't hurt nobody. And I'm also gonna pair it with a nice set of Eagle rods. Um, totally overbuilding the motor. It's not necessary for the 300, 350 horsepower I'm going for with the Jackson Racing Supercharger that we're gonna throw on this eventually. But you know what? Why not go through everything and just overbuild it? I want to romp on this motor and I want to romp on it every single time I get in the car. So I'd rather everything be done perfectly perfect. So where we got to do is we got to start by stripping the transmission off of this. Once we get the transmission and clutch off, then we can put it on our engine stand. Then we can start breaking down the motor to the bare bones and then get it to the machine shop as soon as possible. Cause we got like a three week turnaround time. The car is getting ready to get finished up with Adam. And when it gets here, the goal is to put that motor in there so that the car is mobile and we don't have to push it around. So let's go ahead and start doing it. All right, so our first step is to get the transmission off. So we have a few things we gotta get off. We got our reverse switch up in the front. We got our speed sensor, our starter, and we gotta pull our intermediate shaft out. No big deal. Once we get those out, we have the 17s that hold it to the block. So we're gonna start with our intermediate shaft and. Just keep on going from there. This is like nothing does. We've done this a hundred times. Mike says it's the strongest gun in the world. It's all right. Got it. Oh yeah, it's a brand new clutch on this thing. Wow. Oh, with a, uh, I don't know what flywheel it has. Some sort of marking on it, huh? Looks like it's a Fidenza. It's aluminum. FP. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get that off. Oh yeah, 
that's a seven pound flywheel. Looks like it's a Fidenza seven pound flywheel. This thing revs real quick with this. I don't know if I'm gonna go back with a seven pound, but we'll see. Might be pretty good for the track. All right, engine is up on the stand, clutch and transmission's off. Now we gotta get the harness off of it and we'll start by disconnecting all these clips and getting this thing off of here. So let's go. So now we have all the outside accessories off. Now it's time to start disassembling the head from the block. 
First, we gotta start off by popping the valve cover off. Then we'll get our timing covers off, our crank pulley and timing belt and all those goodies. And then time to get this head off. This thing's moving along quickly. It's almost like we've never done it before. So this is my first look inside the motor since I've got the car. I've never looked inside of it. And surprisingly, this thing looks like it's been pretty well taken care of. I was told it was driven hard and I have no problem with that because that's how every one of these cars should be driven. But as long as your maintenance is up, it's gonna continue to run and look great inside. When these things aren't maintained properly, it's a dark brown, goldish on the inside. This thing still has the aluminum color to it. That means the oil was changed pretty regular on this. So the motor was shown love. Now it's gonna be shown abuse after this and some love too, give or take. As we pop off these caps, we already took off the oil rails. That's what feeds oil into the cams, uh, as you can see here, for lubrication and for VTEC. Um, those are off. Each one of these cams, or I should say cam caps, have their own place. This says I1, so this lets us know it's intake. This one says E1, that lets us know it's exhaust. And then on each cap corresponding, there's a number as well. These ones are really hard to mess up because the distributor only goes in one spot. But you can always keep track of where it is.
So we got the head off and we're taking a look down here at the block and you know we haven't pulled the pistons out to get a really good look at things but um, we don't see any deep gouging vertical gouging which would let us know that we had some bad piston clearance to cylinder wall but we do see some of what's probably out of roundness with these high and low spots all around the cylinder wall hence the reason why we're going to go a half over half millimeter over and that way when we give the new pistons to the machine shop, they're gonna match the cylinder bore to the proper spec of the piston so that our rings will sit perfectly. They're gonna grind the rings to spec and we'll have perfect seal on our pistons to cylinder wall. And we'll have the most impression that we can get out of the build with nothing slipping past. Hopefully no oil burning with anything regards to here. The head's gonna go to the machine shop as well, different machine shop and we're gonna probably do a full head package on it. I haven't ordered those parts yet, but that's coming soon. But up now, we're gonna go ahead and pull the oil pan, oil pump, and take the pistons and rods out of this thing. All right, so we have the oil pickup off and we have the windage tray off. The windage tray separates the rotating assembly from the oil. If your crank, it, it causes a lot of um, wind disturbance inside your block and you wanna keep that away from your oil because the last thing you wanna do is start whipping your oil up when oil starts getting mixed up or hit by the crank or any of that wind, it'll start to foam it and then the foam will put air into the oil pickup and you can lose oil pressure and spin bearings and blow your motor up. And the Type R motors along with the GSR motor, they come equipped with a girdle. This girdle connects the middle three caps of the mains together to give it more stability at higher RPMs. It's a pretty cool thing. You can also see down inside there that there are oil skirter, or squirters. And what that does is it squirts engine oil up on the bottom of the pistons to cool the bottom side of the piston off. It's a pretty cool thing, and it also is specific to certain VTEC motors. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pull our rod bolts and remove the pistons, and that'll get this motor ready for the machine shop. So after looking at the piston, we don't see any carbon buildup on the rings, on our oil scraping ring where we would see to cause blow by. But as we look at it, you can see the wear on the piston itself to wear all the coatings off and even the machining right here is off. You see a high, uh, low point here and low point there. It gives me the idea that the piston was having some of that movement inside the cylinder. So. High mileage motors, that's something you're gonna see. It's metal on metal wear. Something's gotta give at one point, and this is what gives. This is what's gonna cause some engine oil blow by, and you're gonna burn some oil. But good thing we're overboring it for this exact reason. Thank you. 
got all the pistons out. Most everything's broke down. We're gonna pull the water pump off and the oil pump off, and then we'll end up taking some of these sensors off. This is our knock sensor, oil pressure sensor, just because none of that stuff needs to be on there for the machine shop. We don't want them to accidentally break it or anything like that. But once we get these couple things off, she's ready to go and get punched out and get its new slugs installed. So let's go ahead and rip it down. And today is the next day. We got the motor obviously completely apart and now we're on the way to the machine shop. John, tell us more. So yeah, we're heading over to the machine shop right now. It's a it's an old school uh, American muscle machine shop out of Davie, Florida. Um, Redline or race engineering. It's a place we've uh, used for a few of our engines. I think the block on the EM1 and Miguel had sent a block over there. Um, we're gonna have them punch the block out, put the pistons in, rods, seat all the bearings and rings um and just you know ever since tj had to go ahead and get rid of his eg i had to go ahead and build another one it may not be as fast but it's definitely going to be better looking because i mean i don't know something about those wheels you had on the car just never really fit right in my book i don't know no, it's okay soon enough it'll be ahc and more oh and more and more of what evos oh evos <laughs> evolution All right, so the blocks dropped off. Um, they went through all of everything that we're gonna do. They asked me how much boost the engine's gonna run. Uh, I guess that helps set the ring gap and bearing, bearing clearances. clearances. I mean, I know supercharged is really more of a NA kind of build on top of it, but they wanna know everything. They're gonna use a torque plate when they do everything. I don't know what all that means, but apparently it means something good. Yeah, for an extra 40 bucks, why not? Yeah, 40 bucks, just take my money. I'm already spending yeah. enough. Might as well keep going, so. Send it to the moon. To the moon, as much as I, maybe when the supercharger is not enough, I throw a turbocharger on there, yeah. TJ. Or a little nitrous oh, on top there. A little nitrous on top of the supercharger. Send a rod to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, guys, with an engine block dropped off of the machine shop, we are all done with today's episode. On the next episode, John's going to be picking up his Civic hatchback from Bully Vision. The bodywork is all done, along with the rust repair, and also we got a few new things we want to show you guys. It's super, super excited. You guys don't want to miss. Make sure you guys subscribe to our channel, drop a like, and also a comment below. My name is Mike, behalf of AXE Garage. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see all of you next week.